Hi and welcome back. So programming languages can be put into high level or low level programming languages. Actually, most of the programming languages that we use nowadays are just high level programming languages. And most of the, the ones you'll be using will definitely be high level, except for some very old languages that are used for doing very specific things. So a high level programming language this one just offers some abstraction from the complexities of the computer. So what that means is that as a programmer, you don't really have to worry how things are going to be handled way down in the computer system. So this programming language, the high level programming language will protect you from those kinds of details. You don't really have to know. You don't have to know how memory is going to be allocated in the computer. You don't have to know how the motherboard is going to handle things. Your job is just to use this programming language as the interface. And this programming language through its compiler or through its interpreter will be the one to communicate these things to the system. So in most cases, the high level programming language will just use natural language. That's why you find that you have things like if else, if something happens, do this. So this is just something, if someone sees this, they know exactly what an if is. That basically means if this one is true, do something here. And then you can also hear about things like while. So you see it uses just natural language. Most programming languages you'll find these are there. We'll have a look at these ones later on and you will understand them then. But right now I just know that high level programming languages, they just use natural language. They don't really interface with the actual computer system. They don't give direct instructions. You as a programmer, you're not required to give direct instructions. So the most important word to note about here is abstraction. So it will abstract you from the complex system. It just helps you use the programming language and interact with the computer system without really worrying how without worrying how the underlyings of the computer works. So that's a high level programming language. And then we also have the low level ones. These ones, they give little or no abstraction from a computer's instruction set architecture. So the ISA in a computer, the instruction set architecture, this is a part of the computer that handles the programmatic things of a computer. For example, if you in install something, and you try to access it, it is that part of the computer that will handle this. If you plug in a device into your computer, it is this part, the ISA, that will know what to do. So the instruction set architecture just looks at the function that needs to be done and then provides instructions to the motherboard, to the computer system. So a low level language will allow you to directly interact with the underlyings of the computer. The best way to think of a low level programming language is it lets you communicate with the computer hardware. So you'll give instructions and commands using machine language. So machine language, this is language that the motherboard understands. This is language that the computer system understands. So if you say put, put something into maybe a certain memory, there's a way the computer will just understand this directly and will know what to do. So if you have to do things like allocating memory in a, in a low level language, it will be up to you to tell the computer how to do that. Unlike in high level, you will just do your part and things like allocating memories will be done by the programming language itself. So if you want to read more about this high level and low level, you can go and read about them in this link on Wikipedia. So for me, I'm not trying to do an academic kind of thing in this introduction to programming. I want anyone, whether you're in a CS class, that's computer science class, or a related course, or you're just someone who just wants to learn programming. My intention is not the academic side. I just want to show you the bits and pieces that you will encounter in any programming language. And those are the things we are going to be dealing with. So I'll see you in the next video.